if you have been doing lots of research and done all your due diligence and making sure that you got it and you picked up all the knowledge you need, trust me, in no time, those corals, those little frags that you just purchased are gonna outgrow your tank in no time. By the way, if you haven't done all of your research and you need help with coral husbandry, just go and check all my other videos. Quite a few folks these days are into farming corals and I just wanted to go over tips and tricks and just overall supplies I've been using over my time and hobby. So let's go check them out. First thing that's gonna save you lots of money are white subway tiles. If you don't mind square shape of your frag desks, these are a way to go. First of all, if you don't like cutting tiles, don't worry about it, it's very easy. But if this is not something you wanna do, you can always purchase four by four white subway tiles right out of the bat and use those. But the ones I prefer are three by three tiles. Since you cannot purchase three by three ceramic tiles, I get the ones that are three by six and I just cut them in half. All you need for a job like this is just one tool, which is very affordable. I'm gonna have the link down below as well for that one. And it's a handheld tile cutter. It's very easy to use. Basically one side has a little roller where you roll across the tile and then you can use the other side just to squeeze it and tile breaks straight on half. The white subway tiles that I get, I get them in Home Depot. What I also like to do is to raise those tiles a little bit more up since all those corals are gonna start encrusting all the way to the edge and gonna have to have more room for them so they don't touch other corals that are encrusting right next to them. Just cut bigger pieces of PVC and just glue it straight on the bottom of that frag desk. Cause usually all the acroporas or the jitatas would like to crust all the way and then they'll grow on the edge and spread out. And you, by raising that frag desk just a little bit higher up, you're gonna give them more space just so that it can grow and go about. My second favorite item is gel super glue. And the ones I like to get are the ones that come with three in a pack. It's basically two plus one free and I get those in Dollar Tree. And what you can do as well, if they don't have it in your Dollar Tree, you can always order it to websites so you can get delivered to your house or to the store. I've tried all of the other glues that come in the bigger bottles. The only problem that I have with those bigger glues is the tip will always get clogged and get mushy and then I won't be able to use it anymore. I have to replace the whole tip or throw away the whole glue. When I started this hobby, when I started fragging my corals, I had very hard time using this glue or any other glue since I didn't really know how to use it. But these days, what I like to do is first put the glue on the frag plug or a frag disc, whatever have gone on, and then I grab that coral and I start mushing it and then I put it in the water. And that way I start rolling it, pulling it up and down. And that way, the more you do it, you're gonna feel how the glue is getting more and more thicker and more and more harder. And on the end, what I like to just flip it a little bit, raise the collar up and just dab it around. And that way coral won't come off at all. You can use the similar technique when you're gluing your corals to your rock structure. For instance, what I do that way, I put lots of glue in my coral and then I put it inside the water and I start mushing it in the rock and twisting it and turning it. You're gonna feel as the glue gets thicker and thicker and starts to hold that coral. You're just gonna hold it for a few seconds and let it go. It's one of the easier ways I found that you can attach corals on the rock structure. Let me go over how I like to cut my SPS corals with my bone cutters. And what I like to do is to grab that bone cutter, position it that way in the coral, squeeze just a little bit, do a little twist, and that way coral snaps and stays on the hand cutter. And that way you can just pull it straight out. If you like this video so far, feel free to like it, subscribe, maybe check out all my other videos, share the video, go crazy. And if you would like to join Reef Under the Roof crew, go and check out the membership link down in the description. In beginning, I used to purchase a small frag discs as well, but I stopped getting those since with the frag plugs, if you get the ceramic type, you can grab those bone cutters and cut that bottom part very easy and that way you have frag plug or frag disc, whatever you need to use. It's not a secret that coral farms be using egg crates for a while now. I've been using it for lots of different purposes. Like for instance, what I did on this tank right behind me, since I have refugium on the back, I cut small piece of an egg crate and I put chato all around it and that way it's gonna hold that chato so it doesn't make it all the way to the turn pump. I like to use small PVC pipe which I cut in different lengths and that way with zip ties I can attach it and raise that egg crate so it's not standing all the way on the bottom. One other thing that I like to use when I use egg crate, I like to use usually 
bigger frag discs, not the small ones, but the bigger size. And what I like to do as well is dab a little bit of glue all the way on the bottom of that frag plug. And that way, when it starts flipping, since it has a little bit of wiggle room in the egg crate, it doesn't flip all the way out since that glue is holding it like a little hook so it doesn't come off. Plenty of folks have been asking which is the perfect anemone box, what is it that you're using, and the ones I liked are actually cups or pots from hydroponics. The best way to position the cup in your tank is the way that the water can flow on top of it as well, but of course you don't want to put it too much in the water since an enemy can run away, or you don't want to put it all the way on the top so it doesn't get that water rippling at all. And I've been using these cups for a while now, and why I like them, because they have lots of holes on the bottom, and that way an enemy can get proper flow inside the cup. I know it's silly, but I do cut my anemones with scissors. The way I do it is basically I position the bottom of the scissors, I put the anemone's foot, I just spread the anemone's tentacles all the way, and with the top of the scissors, it goes straight through the mount, and that way I cut an anemone straight in the middle, through the bottom, and the top. I know plenty of folks don't really like to do this, but to be quite honest, I never lost an enemy this way. After that, I put both sides of an enemy in a small dish where I add a little bit iodine in it and just let them sit for a few minutes. An enemy needs at minimum month and a half to two and a half months so that mouth comes all the way back into the center so an enemy is nice and big, it's nice and healthy so you can cut it again. If you would like to add anything to this list just drop it in the comments down below. If you haven't checked out my last video where I talked about how to prevent and control algae in your reef aquarium, go and check it out. With all that out of the way, see you guys next video.